Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this Neural Networks and Deep Learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do a, a test of the CPU versus the DPU and the TPU, where we're going to train neural networks in Google Colab. So we're going to see like the performance and efficiency of training the neural networks on both uh, the CPU, the GPU, and TPU, and we're going to see like how long it takes, uh, stuff like that, and then do a comparison of them. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here, uh, and you can go come chat with us about neural networks, deep learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, and also if you have some problems with your own project, you can go ask uh, some questions in there and maybe I can answer them or, so, or some of the other guys can answer them. Uh, so make sure to join the Discord server as well. So we're now going to Google Colab here and I've created three notebooks in this example here where we're going to do a test. So the first notebook uh, we have is the CPU. So we're going to do uh, actual like training neural networks on the CPU. So all of these three different kind of um, notebooks here are identical and we're going to train the neural network on the same uh, data set. And we're also going to create the exact same neural network with the exact same amount of trainable parameters. So we can actually like compare uh, all the three different kind of hardware accelerators so we can see how good performance it is and how, how, how long it takes to actually like train neural networks on the same neural network with the same data set. So first of all, we have this uh, CPU um, CPU um, notebook here, and then we also have a TPU notebook and a TPU notebook. And in all of the different kind of notebooks here, I have chosen the hardware accelerator that we want to test. So in this case here, we're using none as the hardware accelerator because we only want to use the CPU. But for the, for the other ones, I have chosen this TPU and the TPU. And the, so in this example here, we're just going to train it on CPU. So in the first block of code here, we're going to import the TensorFlow library here and the framework that we're going to actually use as we have done in, in all of the other videos here in this tutorial. And then we're going to use one of the data sets that is already built into uh, the TensorFlow data sets here. So we're going to import that as TFDS so we can use the data sets from TensorFlow. And then when we actually like have import different kind of modules here, we can go in here and actually like load the MNIST uh, data set. So the data set that we're going to train on neural networks on in this video here. Um, is in this data set, so it's just handwritten digits that we're going to train our neural network on. So we have this function here to actually like get the data set here. So this is just a function that we run to actually like get our data set and load it in, so we actually like can return uh, to return our data sets that we import from uh, TensorFlow. So here we're just going to use the split here, train if training is, is set to um, to true, else we're just going to use that uh, as test data, so we can actually like both specify if we want to have our test set, uh, test set or our training set uh, from this function here, and we can also specify the batch size, so the number of batches uh, that we're going to create in our uh, both our test set and our training set. So this is just a function that we're going to uh, to run to actually like um, extract the data and actually like load in our data set. Then we can go down here and create our convolutional neural network that we're going to train on. Uh, in this example here, and this is just like an arbitrary uh, neural network that I've chosen with a lot of parameters that we can actually like tune. So in this case here, uh, which we're choosing like 256 filters here for the first uh, two convolutional layers here. So th that's a lot of filters for uh, for convolutional layers uh, in a convolutional neural network. But this is just for demonstration purposes and to see like how fast uh, the TPU is and the TPU is compared to the CPU and also so we can compare the GPU to the TPU. So this is a really complex neural network with a lot of different kind of uh, parameters. So this is just for demonstration purposes and we could have a, a less complicated or less complex neural network to actually like do this purpose here or like this application here trying to predict on handwritten digits. So if we run this block of code here, we are now created this function so we can actually like create our sequential model and this function here just returns that sequential model. So when we want to train uh, our neural network, we first need to compile it. So we need to, ch to choose our optimizer. We need to ch choose our loss function and also the metrics that we're going to, to look at while we're training our neural network. So first of all, here we're just going to create our model here and store our model in this model variable. And then we can compile it again with the atom optimizer here. And we're going to use sparse categorical cross entropy because we just want to know what they did we, we actually like predicted. And then we're going to look at the metric here, sparse categorical accuracy. So, and then at the end here, we're just going to do a summary so we can actually like see uh, the, the layers and the number of parameters and also the number of trainable parameters that we have in our model. So if we run this block code here, we'll now see the summary of a model here. And we can see we have, first of all, we have these two convolutional layers. Then we flatten our, our image or our, our like our image or like our matrix that is representing our image. And then we're creating our top layer here, which is just like dense layers, which is fully connected layers to actually like do the classification. And then in, the, in our output layer here, we have 10 neurons here in our output layer because we have uh, numbers from zero to nine in our MNIST data set. So we're actually like going to do uh, predictions on 10 classes. And then we can down, see down here that we have the number of trainable parameters here. We have close to 40, uh, 40 million, million trainable parameters. So this is a really complex 
uh, neural networks to solve this application here. So again, as I just told you that this is only for demonstrational uh, purpose. So now we have actually like imported our model here and we have now a model stored in this variable model here. Then we're going to actually go down here and specify the batch size uh, that we want in this case here. So in this case here with the MNIST data set, we have 60,000 Im images of handwritten digits and we're going to use a batch size of 200 in, in this example here. And then we can actually like get our train set and our uh, and our test set here by calling this get data set function here, which will just load in our, our, our data set from TensorFlow and we can then specify if we want to use uh, use it as training or, or like a test. And in this case here for the first one, we just want to get our test uh, training, training, training data set. So we specify this is training here, we set that equal to true. And for our test data set, we just set it equal to false down here. And then we also need to specify the batch size. So the whole data set for both our training data set and the test data set is now stored in these two variables, uh, variables here. And then we can pass the, these variables here or like these data sets here to the actual fit function that we're going to train our neural network in. So if we run this block of code here, we will actually like import a data set and, we, and it will now load. So now we have stored our whole data set in these two variables here. And then we're gonna go down here and train the actual model here in, uh, in Keras. So first of all, we specify the number of epochs, so my, like how many times do we want to train our model for. And then we also specify the steps per epoch and the validation steps, uh, which is just like the number of images that we have in our validation set or like a test set and in our training set floor division by the batch size. So this is like the steps per epoch that we're going to take and also the number of validation steps that we're going to take for each epoch. And in this example here, we're running a model through five epochs. So if we go down here and in this fit function here, which will actually like train the neural network in this example here, we just give it the training data set here and the number of epochs, the steps of the epoch validation data and the validation steps. And then when we run this block of code here, it will actually like train our neural network. And in this example here, in this notebook here, we're going to use the CPU to actually like train, uh, to train our model here. So this will take uh, a very long time to actually like get the first epoch running and actually like load in our data set. And we can see here that we, first of all, we get an estimated, estimated time here of, of almost like uh, one hour. So it takes like one hour to run the whole epoch here through, but this will increase over time uh, as the estimates gets, uh, gets better but it will take like approximately like 30, uh, 30 minutes for each epoch here that we, are, that we are running. So in the case here, we're running five epochs, it will actually like take two and a half hours to, to train this neural network here uh, with this complex neural network here on 60,000 images from the MNIST dataset. So meanwhile, if we go into the GPU here, we're actually like just going to do the exact same thing with, this, with the same code here. So all of these blocks of code here is, this, is the same exact for this block here, where we just specify that we want to use the GPU when we're training our neural network. So we just go over here, we specify the, the GPU, we're going to load in the data set. We create the exact same new, uh, convolution neural network here. We compile the same model with the same optimizer uh, metrics and also the loss function. And then if we go down here, we load in the data set as we just did. And then we go down here and then train the model. And when we train the model now, we'll use the GPU to actually like train our neural network because we have specified that we want to use the GPU as the hardware accelerator. So if we run this blog of code here, we will now actually like um, train our neural network here on the GPU. So while it's training here, we're going to do the exact same thing for the TPU here um, in this example here. And if you want to know like how we can set up the CPU, uh, TPU, I've also made a video about that, so make sure to check that out if you want to know like what is going on step by step here when we're setting up the TPU address and also like how we're accessing the, the, the TPUs in Google Colab or in the Google Cloud. So I'll just skip through the, the, the different kind of blocks of code here and just run them so we can actually like compare uh, the, the three different kind of like hardware accelerators and see the results, uh, like the training results and who, how long it, it took to actually like train the complex neural network on the MNIST dataset. So, if you want to know like what is going on specifically line by line here, make sure to check that video out. So we're just going to set up the TPU now and I'm just going to run these blocks of code here. So we're now ready to train the, the neural network here on the TPU here in TensorFlow. Everything is set up and we have chosen the TPU as the hardware accelerator. So we're going to call this fit function here. It will actually like use the TPU to train this uh, neural network here as we just did with the CPU and the GPU. So if I run this block of code here, you will now train the neural network here on the TPU. So all of our neural networks is now done training here, except for the TPUs. So here with the TPU for the first one here without optimization, uh, we actually like have the first epoch here running for uh, 21 seconds. It took 21, uh, 21 seconds to actually like run through the first epoch here um, in when we're training it on the TPU here. And then for the rest of the epochs here, it only took around 10 seconds to actually like run through the whole epoch, uh, running through 60,000 images in this uh, complex neural network here. 
if we do do this the exact same thing here with optimization as I also went over in the in the TPU tutorial that I already did here in, in Google Colab. Then we can see that if we're changing this step per execution here and set that equals to 50 here, this is actually like an optimization step, so it will run a lot faster when we're training it on the on the TPU here. So instead of it takes it takes 21 seconds here for a free epoch and then 10 seconds here for the rest, it actually only takes 15 seconds here for a first epoch and then five seconds for the rest of the epochs here. And if we just kept on training it um, for more epochs, it will only takes five uh, five seconds. Uh, per epoch to actually run. So this is really fast when we train neural networks on the TPU. It only takes five seconds to run 60,000 images through our whole neural network here with 40,000 trainable parameters. So we need to adjust uh, 40 million uh, parameters like every time we pass um, we pass a pass through our whole neural network. So this is really fast when we train neural networks on the TPU. So if we go into the CPU here, we can see that it's still not done training here and it, it's made time left here is still 35 minutes, so we'll actually like take 40 minutes for the first epoch here, and then maybe a bit less for uh, for the rest of the epoch, like around like 30 minutes. So we'll take like 40 minutes for a first epoch, and then 30 minutes for the rest of the epochs here. So compared to the TPU, like they can really be compared. Like it takes a half an hour to train an epoch with the CPU, and it takes five seconds to train it on the TPU. So this is just we can just see like how efficient it is and really fast it is to actually like train our neural networks on the TPU instead of the CPU. And it won't really make sense to train like as convolution neural networks with a really large data set on a CPU. It will just take up uh, too much time. And when we have the GPU and the TPU available here um, in Google Colab, it, it wouldn't make it, it, it wouldn't make sense to use it, the TPU uh, CPU to actually like train neural networks on. So if we're going to the TPU here, uh, we can see that it, it only took like it takes it takes like 92 seconds for the first debug here and then around like 55 seconds for the rest of the epochs here. So we can see that this is still really fast compared to the CPU and we can actually like use the TPU if we have that available or if we're training our new networks on a local machine, then we will often also have a TPU available and this is still way faster than training it on the CPU. So when we compare the TPU here to the TPU, we can see that the TPU is still a lot faster than training neural networks on the TPU and it's up to like 10 times faster to actually like train our neural network um, in this application here, at least uh, compared to the to the TPU, which is like still kind of fast if you have like a medium sized neural network um, and a medium sized data set. But if you have a really complex neural network with a lot of, of images in your data set, like if you're talking like hundreds of thousand images, then you should definitely try out the TPU instead of the TPU because you will just get a lot better performance and it will also train your neural networks uh, way faster. But if you have like a medium neural network, a medium sized data set, then it doesn't really matter if you're using the TPU or TPU, if you should wait for five minutes or if you should wait for only like one minute, it doesn't really matter um, in that case. But in this example here, when we're testing the TPU versus the CPU and, 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 and the GPU, then we can see that the TPU is, is way faster than all the, other, uh, all the other ones. The GPU is okay and we can really use the CPU to train neural networks at least if they're if they're fairly complex and if you have like a fairly large uh, data set then we can't use a, T a CPU at all because it's a general purpose uh, processing unit where the TPU and the TPU is a specific hard rail accelerator which is really good for uh, matrix um, operations like a multiplication and addition and stuff like that which is really what's going on when we're training uh, our neural networks here epoch per epoch. So that's pretty much it for this review here guys where compared to three different kind of like hardware accelerators where we have the CPU, the TPU and the TPU and we can see from the results that the TPU is way faster than both the CPU and the TPU but the GPU is also okay if you have like a medium sized neural network and a medium sized uh, data set but if you have a really complex uh, neural network and a really large data set you should definitely try out the TPU you will get a lot better performance and you will train your neural networks way faster. So remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this content here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I really appreciate your support and helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So I'm currently doing a computer vision tutorial in uh, OpenCV with C++. So if you're interested in, in more like uh, how we're doing uh, image processing and stuff like that and some more like computer vision methods like camera calibration and stereo vision and stuff like that, I'll link to the tutorial up here. Or else I'll just see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.